which is that two of the great wheels of the international system are now turning. And those two wheels are Europe and Middle East. Europe, we have a, a large series of, of programs running at RUSI, which we headline with the words, the return of insecurity to Europe. Because Europe is going to be a far less secure continent in the future than it has been in the past. And we're not talking about a return to the 1930s. That's, that's not on the cards. But the Euro crisis is, is now profoundly political. We're already into the longest recession in European economic history. The last two recessions of the 1930s and 1990s lasted for 36 to 40 odd months. We're now in month 49 of this recession, longest in European economic history, and we're only halfway back. We lost 8% of our GDP, we got 4% of it back, we've got another 4% to go before we get back to zero. So this will turn into a very long recession indeed. And whether or not the euro is saved is not now the, the principal political question as far as we're concerned. It is the fact that we're looking at a southern Europe that will be suffering long-term austerity, whether the euro is saved or not. Long-term austerity is their future. And so in southern Europe, there will be a lot of crises of governance. There will be pressures of uncontrolled migration from south to north. There will be a growth in serious organized crime. With that will go new opportunities for terrorist behavior. And there will be a series of unaddressed crises. Crises in the south will go unaddressed. Whilst northern Europe will remain prosperous but acrimonious, it will try to maintain what it has got in terms of prosperity and stability and will not be sticking its neck out anywhere, anywhere soon for the south. And so the dynamic of Europe, which we have grown up thinking is basically east-west, is becoming north-south. And so one of, those great, one of those great wheels of the international system is turning in ways that we wouldn't have predicted certainly 10 years ago, even five years ago, and we'll see how that works out. The other great wheel that's turning, of course, is the Middle East. And what we're, what we're facing in the Middle East is not just the first turn of the wheel, but the second turn of the wheel in the Arab Spring. The Middle East is on the verge in the Levant of melting down. What we've seen are these uh, um, uh, revolutions across the Middle East, which has, has allowed Islamists uh, close to power or into power throughout the region. That's, from my view, that's absolutely fine, and that's inevitable. Islamist groups and parties get, to, get near to power, not because they're popular, but because they're better organized in a time of chaos. So it's not surprising that the Middle East should become more radically Islamist as a result of most of these revolutions. And that, that wheel will continue to, to turn. I'm pretty relaxed about that. Let them have a go at running the Egyptian economy. <laughs> while they're worrying about the length of the burqa, let them see what they're going to do about Egyptian housing and Egyptian social conditions while they worry about sexual morality. Let them try. That wheel will continue to turn. But what we're facing in the Middle East is a melting down in the Levant. And again, this has not got a whole lot to do with um, America uh, or Israel. It's actually to do with Iran and Saudi Arabia. And uh, the way in which the Syrian crisis is playing out, if the Syrian crisis, which is now explicitly a civil war, if it is a sectarian civil war, then it is the first sh set of shots in a much broader Cold War across the Middle East between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And what we're looking at, and what we're on the verge of now, is two groupings going from west to east between Hezbollah in the Lebanon, the Alawites and the Shia minority in Syria, and the Shia majority in Iraq backed by Iran, the Shias in Iran on one hand, and on the other hand, the majority in the Lebanon, the Sunni majority in Syria, the Sunni minority in Iraq, backed by Saudi Arabia, which is also propping up Jordan. You look at those two dynamics, and we can see that the Levant is likely to go into a, into a sort of a meltdown. And so we can, we can talk about that forever, of course, and we do a lot of work on this at the, at the Institute. But if these two great wheels are turning, North and South Europe, a new Cold War in the Middle East, then we're looking at a future in which the kinetic and non-kinetic needs of defense information superiority will be extremely sensitive. And so it isn't just a question of thinking about the, uh, the ways in which we integrate these technologies to greater kinetic effect. Of course, that's important. Of course, it's important as to what drives it. But actually, I think we might find ourselves trying to apply the, these more mature technologies to extremely complex situations that will affect us in the Eastern Mediterranean, in the Levant, and in the Gulf. I I'd I'd confidently predict that British forces will find themselves trying to stabilize situations in the Gulf in the next two or three years. And I confidently predict, uh, as people can in my position, we can confidently predict anything we like, um, but I confidently predict that we will have much greater defense interests in the Eastern Mediterranean and possibly uh, in Southern Europe. Um, how those things will play out, we don't know.